welcome to Snoozer's Storytime Adventures. And how are you doing today, Snoozer? I am very happy today because I'm going to read a story. That's right. We are going to read a story. And Snoozer, do you like science stories? Hmm. Well, sometimes science is hard. Is this a hard science book? I don't think it's a hard science book, but it might get you very interested in things that have to do with science because it's a book all about the atom. Atom? Is that a guy? No, an atom is a thing. It's a building block of the universe. Huh? Well, the universe is made up of atoms. And I am going to read this story. It is written by David Miles, and it's another bushel and peck book. And I'm very excited for you to learn all about atoms. Let's do it! All right, Adam. Those who are not shocked when they first come across quantum theory cannot possibly have understood it. Niles Bohr. Adam, the building block of the universe. Over there is an atom. Wait! Don't you see it? I don't see anything! I don't see anything either. Where did it go? Well, that's all because atoms are super, 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 super small. To see one, we'll have to zoom in. Go on, a little more. <gasps> See all those dots? Huh? Oh, yeah! That's it. A little more, they say. Let's see. <gasps> there are tiny little dots. Just a little more and... There! Do you see it now? I see it. I do too. This is an atom. And it, my friend, is the building block of everything. This cake? Ooh la la. Atoms. See all those dots? I do. I do. So this cake must be made of many, many atoms. This painting? Ooh la la! Adams! This tower? You guessed it! Ooh la wa! Look at all those. Everything in the entire universe is made of teeny tiny atoms. And when we say teeny tiny, we mean it. Look closely at this baseball. Pretend you blew that baseball up until it was the size of the whole earth. So here, just like our globe, if you made a baseball the size of the whole Earth, if its atoms grew at the same rate, they'd still only be the size of... A blueberry! A blueberry? A tiny blueberry compared to the whole big wide Earth. That really is teeny tiny. All atoms have the same basic structure. At the center is the nucleus. Here, every atom has a certain number of particles called protons. Those have a positive charge. Then, there is also usually an equal number of neutrons, and those have no charge. So the ones with the little pluses on them, those are the positive ones. And the little blue ones, those are the neutrons. Outside the nucleus are often the same number of electrons, which have a negative charge. Niels Bohr proposed that electrons revolve around the nucleus in different orbits, like the planets around the sun. 
This is called the planetary model. However, because of work done by Erwin Schrodinger and others, scientists now believe that electrons behave more like waves. No, not those waves. And no, Schrodinger probably never surfed, though he did love German poetry. Think of the string on a guitar. When you pluck the string, it quivers back and forth with energy, even while the ends of the string stay stuck to the guitar. Scientists believe that electrons act like the string, spread out as waves of vibrating energy. Did you ever notice, like when I play my ukulele, how the string quivers? When it goes, doing, doing. Yeah, I could show you. I'll play one of the string and you can see the string move. You see that? Yes, I do! All right. This is called the quantum mechanical model. And although scientists don't know exactly where the electrons are, they can use math to illustrate predictions. So where the Electrons are most likely to be, if you look at the little chart here, it's where it's kind of white and yellow. And there's so much to look at in this book. So if you are finding this book very interesting, you can really delve into it and look at all the cool stuff they have throughout it. You might have noticed something. Atoms come in many shapes and sizes. The smallest atom has just one proton and one electron and others have over a hundred. See, so sometimes they're just little, one little ball and sometimes it's a whole bunch. A substance made entirely out of just one type of atom is called an element. Let's take a look at a few different elements. An atom of gold is made from 79 protons, 79 neutrons, and 79 electrons. So it's only made of gold. Gold is the only part of it. Have you ever seen a lump of coal? That's made mostly of carbon, which has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. And the helium inside a balloon is made from atoms with two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. There are 94 elements that occur naturally in the world. And there are 24 more that scientists have created on their own. How they do that is beyond the scope of this book, but it involves smashing atoms together at super high speeds. How do they smash the atoms if they can't even see them? You know what? As they said, that's beyond the scope of this book. That's a good thing that you could look into, though. Mrs. Hamilton, am I made of atoms? I, yes, I think you are made of atoms. I can picture them on you right now. Can you see them? I cannot see them. They're too small. Oh, I forgot. If that seems like a lot, don't worry. Over the years, scientists have built a simple chart to organize all the different elements they know of so far. And there they all are listed. It's called the periodic table. The periodic table lists all 118 elements in order of the number of particles that make up their atoms. That number is called the atomic number. Remember gold? It has 79 protons, neutrons, and electrons. So it's given the atomic number 79. And that's written right up here. So they go in order of their number. Oh boy. The number at the bottom tells us the mass of each atom. The different colors group the elements into families of similar characteristics. There's even a handy abbreviation you can use when spelling out each of the elements' names. So. AU stands for gold, so you don't have to write out the whole wor word gold, you just have to write the abbreviation A and U. But wait! You're saying 
If everything is made up of elements, how come there isn't an element called pizza? And there's certainly no stinky sackium on there anywhere. Stinky! <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. You're right. That's because most of what you see around you isn't made from just one type of element. Atoms of different elements like to stick together, and when they do, they build new structures. These are called molecules, and they're held together by bonds. Wow. Take a look at hydrogen. That's number one on the periodic table. And oxygen, that's number eight. When two hydrogen atoms stick to one oxygen atom, they create a molecule of something you might have seen before. Do you think you know, Snoozer? Let me think. Turn the page and find out. Water! Oh, I know what water is. Yes, and often people call water H2O. Oh, that's why they say H2O. That is why. Of course, it takes around 1.5 sextillion of those molecules to form a single drop. Scientists created a convenient way to record what's inside a molecule. They call this the formula. First, they write the abbreviation from the periodic table for each element in the molecule. Then, they write a tiny number to tell how many of that element's atoms are in the molecule. They put it all together and the formula for water looks like this. H, G, O. Two hydrogen and one oxygen. Here are some formulas for other common substances. This is table sugar, and this is chalk, table salt, baking soda. Oh boy, and you can really delve into this book if you look at it on your own and go back and look at the periodic table and figure out all the different things that make up those things. More complex items are made of many different molecules. Just look at what it takes to make a chocolate chip cookie. Wow, all kinds of molecules at work here for flour, butter, eggs, sugar, salt, baking soda, chocolate chips. A lot to think about. And that's nothing compared to living things. Like Frederick Wohler, the father of organic chemistry, though technically he's dead. Or the solar system! Oh my goodness. Or the entire Lumen universe. Wow! So, you see that atom over there? You see him now, Snoozer? Ah, uh, sort of. <laughs> we can kind of use our imagination. Well, you give him a high five. You have a lot to thank him for. Cool. I never knew what an atom was. Yeah, we really learned a lot about atoms and elements and molecules. That was a great informational text that teaches us a lot of information. And there's a lot more to be learned from that book. We just don't have the time to look at every little thing. Yeah, I think I want to go back and read that book again. And look at all the pictures. Yes, that would be a great thing to do. And there's a lot more to learn. But it did make me very thankful for Adams. So I think I'm going to make up a song. Since the book said to give an Adam a high five today, can you give me high five? Let's give an Adam a high five today. Give an Adam a high five today. Give an Adam a high five today. They are super duper small, but they're the building blocks of all. Give an Adam a high five today. Give an Adam a high five today. 
giving Adam a high five today. They are super duper small, but they're the building blocks of all. Giving Adam a high five today. I like that song. I know, I thought it would just be fun. I feel like giving an animal a high five today since we learned so much about them and, and found out, geez, just how important they are. They're the building blocks of the entire universe. I wonder how many atoms I am made of. I bet a hundred thousand gazillion. We don't know, Snoozer. We would have to really investigate that and find out if what molecules you're made of because I'm, I don't think you're just one element you're probably a whole bunch of different elements this is confusing my mind <laughs> it's confusing my mind a little but there's so much to learn and it really makes me want to learn more about science and atoms and elements and molecules and the whole periodic table are we making a craft? We are going to make a craft today. And I was thinking, in the book, they were saying, picture a baseball. If that baseball was the size of the Earth, do you remember how big a molecule would be? A blueberry! Yes, the size of a blueberry. So instead of making a baseball, I thought maybe we would make an orange to represent kind of like an orange the size of the whole earth and then uh, Adam would be just the size of a teeny tiny blueberry so I want to make those two fruits so we can think about how wonderful atoms are and really just how very small they are so these are the two sheets we need. We've got our circle here for the orange and a tiny circle for the blueberry. So I think I'm going to get started. What do you think, Snoozer? All right. Well, that was a tea tiny mouth, wasn't it? All right. So we are going to put together a teeny tiny blueberry and then an orange just to help us remember just how small an atom is. So, snoozer. We read in the book about the baseball, and what did they blow that baseball up to be the size of? The size of the whole wide world. That's right, the whole Earth, which is gigantic. We live on Earth, and when we see oh, a picture of the Earth from far away, it's quite big, isn't it? So we have to imagine this orange being as big as the Earth. And to figure out just how small an atom is, we would have to have our orange as big as the whole Earth, and then an atom would be, be the size of a blueberry. That's a big blueberry! <laughs> yeah, this blueberry is even bigger than a regular sized blueberry, which would be the size of an atom. That is remarkably small. How wonder I can't find any atoms on you by just looking at you, Snoozer. They're pretty small, aren't they? Yes, I like that cute little blueberry. I know, and it just makes me, I just want to remind myself of just how small an atom is by using this analogy. So we think of the orange as big as the whole world. The whole world. And if we wanted to see just how small an atom is, we would have to envision a little teeny tiny blueberry. <laughs> That's right. So we learned a lot today, didn't we? Yes! I learned what an atom is. And I learned about the whole world and blueberries and science and, and, and the periodic table. That's right. Wow, we can learn a lot of information from stories. And I had great fun with you today, Snoozer. We had great fun putting together our craft. And I'll see you, Snoozer, and all of you next time on Snoozer Storytime Adventures. Bye. 
right, boys and girls. Would you like to do the Mrs. Hamilton craft just like me? Guess what? You can! Head to your local library for all the materials that we use in the craft. Plus, we have activities.